Hi, uh, I'm Kai Fu Lee, uh, Chairman and CEO of Sun Innovation Ventures. I was Raj Reddy's um, graduate student in the 80s. I did my thesis on Sphinx, Speaker Independent Continuous Speech Recognition System uh, in Raj's speech group. And this has really been a truly illustrious group from which I think all the members benefited tremendously from Raj Raj's vision and uh, generosity. Uh, his vision uh, pretty much spans his whole career, whether it's in uh, digitizing books or uh, <clears throat> going after spoken dialogue, speech recognition, dictation, um, and, and many other uh, very ambitious projects. And I think Raj is truly one of the visionaries in the field who can see uh, decades be um, ahead and, um, and give all of us um, guidance and also optimism that um, a huge progress will be made and that technology is for good and will um, eventually uh, lead to huge benefits for uh, the human race. I remember uh, specifically when I first entered the group, um, the speech group, it was largely working on expert systems or based on the idea that if a human expert can describe how speech may appear as a spectrogram, then that process and the human expert's reading and understanding uh, at a phonetic as well as linguistic level can build up to an expert system-like capability. And that was a fascinating approach because it was very much uh, following the human thinking process, which is the most intuitive way to approach artificial intelligence. But after working on it for about a year, I felt that I hit a dead end, that the approach taken is um, seems brittle and does not generalize or scale well. And I wondered if there could be another approach that would be stochastic based on um, large data and using the large data to train machine learning uh, into models uh, that could be self-organized. So if we compare expert systems to traditional programming, which is the human programmer must specify line by line of code, how the program should behave. Uh, I wondered at the time if there could be a more powerful approach, which in which the machine learning will essentially self-organize into capabilities um, and also improve itself as we have more and more training data. And, and whether there could be a different way of, um, of uh, intelligence that is not generated with the brains that we have, but that may use completely different principles and numbers. And it may be somewhat of a black box initially, but will gradually become explainable. So this curiosity began as I read uh, a number of papers by other professors like Jeff Hinton uh, at CMU, uh, Alex Weibel, and also um, uh, I was fortunate to have been mentored by Peter Brown, who was a few years my senior and had studied at um, CMU, but also IBM, where he taught me hidden Markov models. So with that revelation, I felt the statistical approach was one that I wanted to try and I really had to drum up the courage to go to Raj and suggest that, uh, that I would do something different from the rest of the group. And very much to my surprise, he was uh, not necessarily in agreement with my idea, but very supportive nevertheless. Uh, I think the words he said were to the effect that I may not agree with you, but I will support you to follow your heart. And, and that, that was that generosity and that open-mindedness is, I think, what allowed the CMU speech group to come out with so many different, uh, really groundbreaking ideas, starting with uh, Jim and Janet Baker, followed by uh, Hearsay and Harpy, and then uh, Sphinx, and then subsequent work. I think that was extremely in instrumental in, in Raj's open-mindedness that in exploration, for technologies, we need to be open-minded, not just feel like our way is the way to go. I think that was extremely critical. 
um, <clears throat> I worked with uh, Xiao Wen Han and we built Sphinx together. Uh, I worked on the modeling and the training and he developed a decoder and it turned into my PhD thesis and also a variant of it became his PhD thesis years later. And, and the Sphinx uh, were, is one of the most proud moments of my life because I remember distinctly at the time, uh, Raj also took the gutsy step of hosting a meeting and passing a microphone around and let anybody speak to Sphinx. And, and that really was to show off that we could handle speaker independence because in the auditorium of lots of people, we could not possibly have trained everybody. And in fact, Sphinx was the first system that delivered speaker independent continuous speech recognition. And that I'm deeply grateful to Raj for, for his open-mindedness and generosity. And, and also just a little diversion. Uh, I felt that uh, it's not just the generosity alone, but it's really a tremendous form of leadership to when you want to, to lead a group of really smart people, letting them follow their heart and giving it, giving them whatever support you can is the greatest form of encouragement and leads to the greatest likelihood of success because people want to work on things that they truly believe in. And, that, and I was able to experience that in the speech group under Raj's um, mentorship. And that became um, an inspiration for me in the, in the decades that followed that I've had the fortune of uh, leading people at great companies like Apple, Microsoft, and, uh, and Google. So, um, so today we look at the future and we see tremendous progress having been made uh, in speech in the last seven or eight years. I think first was the, that we found the hidden Markov model approach, which was so effective and so clever and so um, limited in requiring minimal compute cycles by, by taking advantage of the time synchronous nature of speech, but it really was not the most powerful learning algorithm. As we now know, uh, a class of algorithms named deep learning and its descendants became most powerful first in computer vision and then adopted for um, speech recognition. And we see records being broken uh, one after another, beating human performance by my uh, former colleagues at Microsoft and Google and others. It's really, we've really seen tremendous progress uh, in deep learning. And we're also seeing that across computer vision, um, video and um, uh, graphics and speech and natural language, people seem to have converged on a class of algorithms that span different data types. So that's extremely exciting also. And I think the, even more recently, we saw a technologies, a set of technologies that were developed specifically for language, which remain to be one of the challenging um, and uh, stubborn problems that could not be solved even as we got better and better at acoustics phonetic modeling. It turns out that language, um, uh, we use very simple approaches in my thesis, bigrams and trigrams to approximate language. Um, but, um, but a huge extension, um, sometimes called the large language models, sometimes called the foundation models, in the last three to four years has taken deep learning to an even higher level. The idea is that if AI works better with more data and it's, it has an inscrutable, mysterious, huge network of numbers and layers and um, weights that the more data you throw, the better it works. How about if we throw an infinite amount of data? How about if we throw so much data that it could, they could not be labeled? So the idea has led to the large language model, LLM or a foundation model, which basically trains on everything in the whole world in building a self-organized model that's forced to create a compressed abstraction that would have its own idea of concepts and would be used most appropriately with the stochastic type of approach of learning as opposed to the human learning. So I think that is, um, I think the approach built on uh, use leveraging huge data sets um, will continue to be the, the, the state of the art and the best approaches and, and the essentially infinite amount of data or trillions of pieces of data 
used to train this huge language model can now be potentially um, compressed and fine-tuned and filtered to specific domains so as to overcome a huge problem that we had for years, which is how do you take a natural language um, and a speech into a real application? The effort it took to create a domain model was incredibly time consuming. But the recent progress in LLM gave us hope that could we train a huge model and use it as the is just like a child has English as the fundamental model and accept that this AI has read everything in the world. And then can you use that as a basis and then fine tune or do transfer learning into specific applications. Maybe it's an airline reservation application. Maybe it's a machine translation. Maybe it's question answering. Maybe it's targeted advertising and really opens up huge opportunities. Imagine the kind of capabilities that can do very highly accurate question answering will really um, redo every type of language related task that we know how. So once this LLM starts to work, uh, and to be deployed quickly, it can create so many applications that are language-based, that are conversational-based. It can potentially uh, morph search engine from a task where you type a bunch of words and get a bunch of websites into one where you type a question and get a very specific singular answer. Where And we'll also move towards this place where we can really digest, comprehend uh, everything we want to know about the particular user and use that information to generate relevant content as well as user targeted advertising and uh, e-commerce descriptions. Imagine uh, that in the future when this large language model works extremely well, combined with a recommendation engine and an application, one could use it to find any information in the world. One could use it to have instantaneous and very accurate machine translation and speech recognition. And also imagine it can be used to tune any natural language application with speech or text input. Um, and imagine uh, that we go to a, an Amazon page and that we, you and I may be seeing the same product, but it may be described differently depending on what it knows about us so that it would synthesize the language. And we also saw recently that with efforts like uh, diffusion um, um, technologies, as well as DALL-E based on open AI, are various ways that can take language to images. And for sure, that will go to 3D and video and content. So in the future, we'll be able to see uh, entertainment content created intelligently, photorealistically, and targetedly for each person, potentially with the different characters, different stories, and different endings that will be maximally entertaining, pleasing, or perhaps engaging, helping the user to learn and grow and become more knowledgeable. So I really see that uh, language really is the essence of all human knowledge and what we pass on to posterity and how we record history and knowledge. And this ability to use big data to collect all the, all the knowledge we, we, and all the text and all the content in the whole world, as well as all the vivid uh, video and content and um, um, uh, 3D models can all be combined together in the future that will revolutionize the future of uh, entertainment, communication, finding information, organizing information, social networks, and so on. And we'll truly see this data-driven approach becoming a basis to tie together all kinds of disparate data types and that can really revolutionize every imaginable application and disrupt existing ones and create new ones. I, I'm more hopeful than ever that we will see a huge revolution in the next few years, um, just as we've seen uh, computer vision as driven by convolutional neural network and deep learning has led to uh, amazing applications uh, from manufacturing uh, inspection to factory automation to autonomous vehicles uh, and so on. 
And I think we'll see the same happen with language, but language is much, much bigger than computer vision because language is not just uh, one form of our six senses, but rather it is the fundamental encoding of human uh, knowledge and understanding. And it's, um, it's a, it, it can be used, uh, if it can be, it can be used to really revolutionize every imaginable application and create new scenarios and use cases. So I'm incredibly excited about that. And all of this, of course, began in the CMU speech group. And I really wish the group the best that going forward, it can remain to be the one of the most vibrant, uh, productive and uh, open-minded and the generous and successful groups that really helps uh, all computer scientists find ways to harness um, the power of language and to create tremendous applications and use cases uh, that will change the world. Uh, thank you, it was great uh, sharing with all of you and I look forward